Okay, I had the question on how you can get Excel to come up with a model based on the data in order to predict your data. And specifically, could you fit this model, this Cobb Douglas general model to, uh, to this data holding K and alpha constant? So this is probably pretty easy to do, but first let's just go ahead and graph the data. So I'm going to highlight it. And uh, I guess we could highlight it like this and go insert. And I'm going to do a scatter plot. And so this is the widgets queue based on the. And let's just go ahead and uh, add uh, add some information here just so we know what this is. I'm going to add the, the x axis, horizontal axis, is uh, equal to workers L, right? And then this is the widgets queue in this direction. So we could we could uh, let's go ahead and just add that axis. Primary vertical equals widgets Q. Okay. Now, so that's that's the function we have, and we want to create a create a function using K and alpha, guessing K, varying K and alpha to get. Well, let me just show you how this works. So first, we're going to go ahead and input. We're going to guess K and L for this. This is not what is, we're going to end up with. We do have to guess something in order to create our function. So I'm going to go Q equal, the predicted widgets is equal to K, which is what I'm guessing is 1 in this case. And I'm going to go ahead and F4 for this because um, when I copy this across, I always want it to point at the same K. And then the Cobb Douglas takes it to the alpha power. So I'm going to take it to the alpha power. Again, we want to F4 that. And they're going to take that times. The next is L. L is actually this right here. I don't F4 that because I want it to move as I move across. And then uh, I'm going to take that to the power 1 minus alpha which is that right there. And again, I want to F for it because I want it to always point to that alpha. So, and then I can copy this equation across and I get, I get the fitted value, I get the values from, from that using the, the, those values of K and alpha. This is what my output's going to be. So I can go ahead and add this to my chart. So I'm going to go ahead and, um, uh, what I will do is, um, I'm going to go up here to uh, chart design, select data. I'm going to add another, I'm going to say this is predicted widgets. And my X values are the same. The worker's L. And my Y values in this case are these right here. Okay. Okay. So now you can see, and let me go ahead and add a legend in here now that I have this. Put it on the bottom. So this is the predicted widgets and this is the actual widget. So based on this K and this alpha, this is the line the 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 line I get. Now the question is can I make Excel guess these without having to guess them? Because I could guess myself, well what if K is 0 0.5? What does it do? And that changes the line like so. What if alpha is 0.25? So I can sit here and guess this and try to get this as close as possible to this S-shaped curve. But it would be nice if we could get Excel to try to do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate something called the error. In fact, let's call it the error squared. Because if I use just the error, then I'll get negative and positive numbers, and it'll be kind of meaningless. So my error is going to be, we'll call that uh, the error squared to be uh, Q minus Q hat. And let's go ahead and square it. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to do Q minus Q hat squared. So it's going to be this. I'm going to go equals this minus this. And then I'm going to put that in parentheses and square it. Okay, so that's the error. And I can copy, I can do the error for each one of these predicted values. And then what I can calculate is something called the mean squared error, which is equal to the average 
of these predicted values. And the lower that average is, uh, the better my model fits. In fact, if it was zero, it would fit this exactly for each one of these points. Okay, so so what I want Excel to do, I want Excel to minimize this by changing these two values. So Excel has a function built into it. It's something called Solver. It's under Data. And Solver will be over here. If you don't have Solver here, you would have to go to File and then go to Options. And then uh, in Add-ins, you click down here on Excel Add-ins and go Go. And then if you don't show Solver, this would be unchecked. And you have to check that and go OK. Mine is already checked, so I'm going to go Cancel. Once Solver appears, you hit Solver. And then I want to set this to a minimum by changing these two cells. And I'm not going to do any other constraints. And I will just go Solve. And go OK. So it appears that Excel, the best thing I can do is, is a fairly straight line I tried to fit fit there. And I got the mean squared error down to 0.22105. Uh, All right. So it looks like that model probably is not going to be very well at, at making an S shape. So the question is, is, can Excel do anything else to maybe, maybe I could find some other model that might fit. So one thing you can try, we can try this right here. I can click on this. I can right click and go add tread line. And we can try some of these different models here. Let me move this over so we can look at this graph. This dotted line is what we're getting when we're different. Here's a logarithmic. Here's a linear. So the linear is not quite what the linear is a little bit different than what the what we did with the uh with with with, it, with the Cobb Douglas, right? It's the, the slope is a little bit steeper. And I don't know if that one would be a better model, but that's a linear model it has. Um, we could all, so this is the model for the linear. It would be 0.57L time, minus 0.5254. But um, we also could try, so I'm going I'm to go ahead and go ahead and delete that. Because that probably is not the best model. Let me delete that linear model too. Let's try it some more. So again, I'm going to go uh, add trend line. And uh, polynomial. It looks like we can get some kind of curvature. Maybe we can increase the order of polynomial. As we increase the order of polynomial, so look, there's fifth order. Sixth order actually fits pretty well, right? So let's go ahead and display that equation. So that would be the equation for sixth order polynomial. So, um, so that might be a better equation, right? Uh, so these are the so the, 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 instead of x you could think of x as uh, l and y as q. So um, so that that polynomial six order polynomial actually fits pretty well. Um, so anyway, now I could actually put those numbers in and actually do the same thing here, right? I could vary these constants. I could make Excel do that too, just put you know guess these these six the I guess how many constants are there one two three four five six seven I could have solver guess these two right I could put this equation in and have it guess these numbers and bury them until I got and it'll probably come up with the same thing but it is that automatically for us using this using this uh, hopefully that makes sense to you but anyway um, so that was a question I can't think of another way to come up with a model have Excel come up with a model. You have to kind of uh, try different models. I can't think of a way to Excel to actually come up with a model besides adding a trend line. Or else if you have a model, try to fit it, fit it using Solver. So hopefully that was helpful. That's it for this video. Um, if you like this video, my picture will come up. Go ahead and click on it and hit subscribe. Uh, hit like. Uh, encourage me to do more videos like this. And uh, hope, hopefully that helpful. Thank you. Bye.